um, we actually had a student in the audience that I didn't even know at the time who was from Parkland, who'd moved to the Tampa area and she came to see the show and she spoke up in the talk back and said, I'm a survivor from Parkland. Mm -hmm. And, um, we were all like, you know, uh, <laughs> um, mm. and then over the summer we did, um, the hundred dresses, which addressed issues of bullying. So, um, we had, um, different experts front ranging from psychologists to Freddie Barton with safe and sound Hillsboro, um, talking about bullying and what we can do to stop it in the community or what should kids do when they see it or experience it or what can parents do. Um, we had the president of the anti-bullying advisory committee for Hillsborough County there. And, and like I said, we, we try to get local experts to really um, help people if they are dealing with, with the issues that the plays address. So how do you pick a play? Is it like, Oh, now I think we should do one on bullying or now we have to address this thing or how does, how do you pick the material? Um, I read a lot of plays mm. <laughs> uh, and we have a play reading, uh, a small play reading committee that we uh, pass plays back and forth. And we have like a little rubric or, or, you know, kind of like grading sheet of, you know, uh, the things that we've, you know, can we do this play because of this, 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 or this? Um, and we discuss it. And um, last year, you know, when, when the shootings happened in, in Parkland, um, it got me thinking because I, I had seen Columbinus many years ago. Um, What's it probably, about? Is it, it's, a, it's about it's Columbine? About the it's about the shootings at Columbine mm -hmm. and, um, and sort of the two shooters and, and sort of a, it's sort of a docudrama. Hmm. So it took a lot from transcripts, police interviews, um, the videos that the boys themselves created. Hmm. Um, and then uh, then the playwright also took some liberties and sort of based on all that research, then also added some scenes in there. But some things were directly from the transcripts. Um, so it was very, very uh, impactful. Um but when, but when the shootings at Parkland happened, we were in, was around the time we were trying to pick our season. And I said, gosh, I remember this play, Columbinus. It was, like, amazing. It's one of those plays that stuck with me from 10 years ago or more. And I was like, I wonder if I read it today, if it would hold up, mm. you know? And um, I found a copy and reread it, and I'm like, changed the name, and it's still what's happening, you know? Um, and it also happened to be the 20th anniversary in April of Columbine. Unbelievable. And I was like, okay, we need to do this play. Mm. You know, um, this, that was sort of a, a no brainer because of the timing of everything. Mm. Um, and then I also started thinking about, well, what would be a good, you know, since we usually do, produce two, maybe three plays a year, what would be a good play to kind of bookend with that? Um, and um, I thought about and remembered The Hundred Dresses, which is another play that I had seen years ago and had um, used examples from in teaching. What's that about? And, I know you said um, bullying, but what's like the general story? Yeah, um, it's based on a, a book, actually, a Newbery Honor book. Um, and it's about a young Polish girl who um, in the in the thirties is, is bullied. Um, her family is an immigrant, so she doesn't speak very good English. Um, but she also only has one dress that she wears to school every day. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the other girls start to bully her. Um, but it's based on the book and it's a very kind of well-known book. The book is still on after, I mean, it's like a 65 year old book and wow. it, it's still on the national education administration's top 100 books for children, um, because of the themes. Um, and, um, so I thought, well, that could be really interesting. And because of my teaching background, I said, it might be kind of fun and evocative hasn't done a children's or family play, you know, yet. Mm. So, um, that's kind of how we picked last season. So, but sometimes it's just reading a lot of plays too, and just kind of saying, okay, do we like this? Do we want, you know, how could we get two plays? These two plays sort of make sense together. Um, this season we're producing a Shane and Madel, and then in the summer we'll be producing Boy Gets Girl. Um, and 
the plays are drastically different, Mm -hmm. um, but they both have sort of this theme of women starting over for one reason or another, Mm. Um, sort of a a new beginning in their life. And that's kind of what we call this season, a season of new beginnings. So Um, maybe backpedaling a little bit. So just starting in evocative theater, did you have a business plan or approach of how you want the theater to look, how to run? (laughs) <laughs> probably should have <laughs> um, you know not exactly no um, I mean we you know we, we kind of learned a little bit as we went along um, you know we we did have some ideas of like I said what we wanted to do and we knew we you know we could uh, partner with stage works um, but a little bit, we kind of just jumped in. It was sort of, uh, you know, a passion project in a way, you know, mm. something we really wanted to do. Um, so we kind of just jumped in and we've been we've been uh, figuring things out a little bit as we go. But, <laughs> um, but I feel like um, the community has really embraced what we're doing. And, um, you know, we, we continue to get... Um, uh, you know, positive feedback from not only people attending the plays, but um, even the actors in the plays are saying, you know, uh, you know, the show changed me or I, you know, I still think about it. And, you know, my actors from Columbinus, we all still stay in touch. And, and, you know, on the anniversary, the 20th anniversary of Columbine, we were all messaging each other mm-hmm. and, um, you know, it just had a profound impact on people's lives, you know, Um and I think the community, like I said, and even the, even the, uh, the critic community, I think has has sort of uh, embraced what we're doing too, because they realize we're doing not the typical theater and stuff that's maybe pushing mm-hmm. the envelope a little bit, you know. So. Where do you think this comes from? <laughs> what specifically? Just the the this whole idea of this move it seems more like a it's like a theatrical movement that you're wanting to send these messages about these issues through your art is it is there like a thing that you really want to help people or just bring to light these things um i don't know i guess um where does it come from that's Mm. interesting um I'm not sure I know how to answer that one. Uh, Just, I think I tend to be a pretty serious person, I guess. Um, So I feel like it's, there's a lot, I don't know, it's hard to, it's really hard to answer. Um, Because it's funny, my mother every once in a while says, I never knew you were like such an activist or something. (laughs) And I don't, I don't think of myself Mm -hmm. that way. I just feel like um, there are, like I said, there, there's, there's so many theaters out there doing so much other work out there that I feel like this is a little, maybe a little bit of a niche that we could kind of fill. Definitely. And you're filling it. That's great. (laughs) It is great. Now, uh, your involvement in each show, is it? have you been directing any of the shows, or is it mixed when you're producing uh, the shows? I've directed all but one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 100 Dresses was the first show I didn't direct, um, and I was actually in that one. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> so still involved, uh, still involved, but on stage as opposed to, you know. Who did you play? Um, I played... A, uh, a mother of one of the girls, um, mm. one of the little girls. There was uh, basically the the main character of the play in Hundred Dresses is not the girl who's bullied or the one who's doing the bullying. It's a, actually one of the girls who knows it's wrong but doesn't say anything. Ooh. Um, and she ends up, you know, going through a lot of turmoil inside when uh, the Polish girl's family moves away and she realizes what they really did was wrong and she should have said something. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I played her mother. um, And um, uh, so it, it was, uh, it was fun to get to uh, be on that side of stage for a little bit. (laughs) Definitely. You have the title as producing artistic director. 
mm-hmm. for the theater. Um, who else is involved with the with you in the theater? Um, well, we have um, a board of directors, so uh, they help with many, many things. Um, and um, my husband also helps with <laughs> lots of things, depending on where, what I recruit him to help me with. Um, the name. And <laughs> yes, the name. Yes, absolutely. Um, and we have a couple of people who have sort of been from the beginning uh, helped. So I have... Um, you know, a scenic designer that I work with and someone who helps me with publicity. And um, I have uh, someone who helps with um, sort of the historical perspective of the plays as a, as a dramaturg and mm-hmm. um, things like that. So I, I have some, some really wonderful friends who uh, believe in what we do. Mm-hmm. And so they've sort of joined forces. <laughs> That's great. That's what you need. Yes. Now, the next show is coming up. It well, it's it's, gonna, it's here basically because <laughs> it's January, and uh, the show is a Shana Maydell. What can you tell us about it? Um, well, it's a beautiful play um, about a family, a Jewish family, just after uh, World War II ends. Um, it's a it's really about this family reconnecting and starting over. Um, it, it what happened is the, the whole family was supposed to immigrate to America before the war. Um, and uh, it's a mother and father and two sisters. And right before they're supposed to travel, the one sister becomes very ill. So one of the sisters, uh, the older sister and the mother stay behind and the younger sister and the father go to America with always the intent of bringing the rest of the family over. Um, unfortunately, in that time period, a lot of things happen from the Great Depression to the war, and it ends up being 20 years later, and they find out that the one older sister is still alive. And so they bring her to America. But as you can imagine, after 20 years, they're strangers, and mm. everything that the sister has been through um, and survived um, has made her a very different person. Um, so it's, 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 it's actually a really, really wonderful story though, because it's really about these two girls who, you know, they're, they're just getting to know each other again and reconnect as a family and as sisters, um, with their father. And, um, it's really lovely. So it's told also through a series of sort of, um, memories, and flashbacks so some so it takes place in the present in new york city um but also in a f- flashbacks into poland of of what it was like for her before the war with her mother and her best friend and her her husband um and then she also has fantasies of what the potential future could be like so it sort of takes place in the past present and future mm. so it's sort of interesting it sort of shifts time in a lot of ways different actors for different errors in some of the sequences um not so much um Hmm. yeah i guess if it were a movie you could do that or if you wanted to have a really large cast perhaps but the way it's written it's actually written for six actors Hmm. and and that's that's how we're performing it so even though you know the husband in some scenes is supposed to be you know maybe 16 or 17 and then later he's older it's still the same actor okay. so yeah and uh what's your involvement are you directing this one i'm directing mm-hmm. this one yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. how's it been directing yes. this show um as opposed to other shows yeah um different challenges yeah different <laughs> challenges this one has a lot of yiddish in it Oy vey. so so that's been a challenge <laughs> um and then um on top of just the actual Yiddish, the dialect work too, because when they speak English, um, the father and the one daughter have the Yiddish accent. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's been that, that aspect. And then, um, it's, it's emotional. Um, both, you know, there, there are some places where it's, it's very impactful and very moving. Um, you know, I told him the other day, I was like, I need some tissues in rehearsal. Mm. This is crazy. Um, but um, it's definitely a drama. It's, um, but it's hopeful. And that's one of the things I really love about it. It, it. it ends on a hopeful note. It ends 
with us knowing that this family is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to move forward. They're getting past it. 